Hey, those of you who are taking uh, composition this semester, I wanted to provide a short video to give you some feedback regarding your ePortfolios. What I'd like to do is uh, share a little bit or provide a few comments for each of your portfolios and ask that you, all of you watch the entire video. I think we can learn a lot from each other to see kind of uh, compare and contrast some of the design aspects that we have in our own ePortfolio and compare those with our classmates. So. Uh, taking a look here at um, this first, the first uh, e-portfolio. So it's it's uh, it's good that you have your name on the main page. I think it's very important to establish your name. Make sure that it's uh, fairly big, that you're using a fairly big font, so that it's very obvious uh, whose e-portfolio it is. Now, one of the things that we need to make sure is that the text is easy to read. In this particular case, for me, the text is a little bit hard to read. I am, watch, I am looking at this on a mobile device, so uh, take that into consideration. And I think it's a good idea to compare your ePortfolio to see how it looks on your cell phone versus maybe a tablet and then even a, uh, a desktop computer just to have an idea how it looks. But regarding the text in this case, I would choose a text that makes it a little bit easier to read simply because the background color uh, makes it a little bit difficult to read. Now, I know that uh, a lot of you are choosing really attractive uh, formats, templates that come with uh, the hosting service, in this case Wix. I would suggest that you remove all extraneous information, information that comes with the template but you aren't going to be using. Okay, so I would rather you have just information related to your own your own progress, right? Not only in this class, but other classes. We've talked about this before, that I recommend that you use this space not only for our class, but for, for any class or any purpose, really, that is uh, designed to show you as a, as a professional uh, teacher practitioner. So uh, make sure that your text is easy to read. Make sure that all these extra images are have been removed. And let's see here. So new page, like I would change this if you're going to use this as for something. Maybe this can be your about page because you have a contact information here. I think this is a good way to have others contact you. So without leaving your email, you can use this type of um, page for others to contact you. Having said that, um, I would recommend that you not use your email or any of your personal data that you don't feel comfortable sharing to the public. So make sure that you uh, are only sharing information that you're comfortable with sharing. Uh, again, being that this is a, a public web page. So just make sure that if you're using a navigational bar, which I think everyone should be using a, a navigational bar, um, make sure that you have titles for those, those buttons. And I think we've talked about in the past also some different ways of organizing your ePortfolio. Since you're all taking the uh, BA program, one of my suggestions was to organize by, by strand. Okay, so I think we talked about having one strand dedicated to English uh, proficiency, another related to applied linguistics, another line uh, related to teaching methodology, and a fourth line, teaching practicum. Um, and then you would follow within each of those areas, you could have a, a button or a space dedicated for each of those sections. And then with each of those sections, you could then uh, illustrate your your skills, your, your knowledge, your skills, and your, your values or attitudes, dispositions. Think of your own professional development, development in terms of those three aspects. Okay, so here um, Freddie is taking kind of an informal um, approach, which is fine. So Freddie's space. I would suggest at some point that you have your full names because again this is going to be a point of contact for many of uh, potential employers or that you might be uh, you know seeking maybe even uh, exchange programs so it's important I think that you at some point at some place have have a, a place where 
your name is, compl is, uh, is shared. And in this case, again, I, I, find, I see nothing wrong with having kind of an informal title, Freddie Space, but it may be under the About Me, you could have uh, the, the entire name and displayed very clearly. And uh, here it looks like he's going to be adding his educational philosophy, which I highly recommend. Uh, make sure that your educational philosophy is someplace in your ePortfolio, and I think one of the most logical places to put it is under a page dedicated to, to you, called either About Me, you could either title it, you could even title it About, or even Contact, uh, those are some other words that you could use, um, but About Me is probably uh, your best title there. Now here there's nothing wrong with setting this up by unit, but remember that I encourage you to have this space for all of your work that you're doing as a, as a student and current or uh, pre-service teacher that, uh, that you have this navigational bar set up to where you can categorize all the different areas of your knowledge, your skills, and your values. So this is fine for now and certainly for the purposes of this class. There's nothing wrong with setting it up this way. But again, I encourage you to think broader, you know, on a bigger scale, not just for the purposes of this class. Now, I would suggest that all text, all work that you work on in Google Drive, that you copy and paste and create a, a page in your ePortfolios. I would ask that you not include any links or embeds like this one, or even file attachments. I would avoid file attachments, embeds, and direct links. Just copy and paste and bring the text over to the, um, to the ePortfolio so that everything is self-contained. All the information that relates to your work is part of each of the ePortfolios. All right, so here we have the main page. Um, I think that one of the things I would ask that you consider is the, the main page be a dedicated page that is broadly states, you know, um, maybe what, what the purpose is of the ePortfolio. Things like your educational philosophy, all the products that we're doing, I think should be on a, what I would call a sub page or a page within the ePortfolio not necessarily on the, the main page itself. So here I think you can take advantage of having more, um, more buttons or more subpages or navigational options, uh, much like we've seen here um, in these other examples, something like, like this here, All right? We've got different either units or areas of your expertise, All right? Again, as I mentioned before, you could set it up as having it um, by, by the strand based on the, the BA that we have in ELT. All right, so here we have language skills. Everything should be easy to find, so we have writing. So again, I would not embed anything. So I, we need to have pages that have the actual text in the actual uh, in the actual ePortfolio, right? So I would prefer not to have to go to another page. Everything should be within, should be self-contained within the, the unit here, within the ePortfolio. Um, so make sure that all extraneous information has been removed. Okay, I'm gonna go through here and see. Okay, so again, I think this is a good good way to have a contact information, but again, you want to remove all extraneous information here. Make sure that the ePortfolio is in English, including all the titles and headings. So make sure everything is in English. Okay. Uh, this particular page, if you recognize this, um, double check your link. This is a link that I used in the spreadsheet that uh, that I ask you to, to share your, your link. All right, so this is an example. I'm glad I was kind of looking for uh, an example of what, I'm, what I was uh, talking about earlier. This is how I would like for your text, all of your text, all the products that we complete for this course, 
They should appear in your ePortfolio uh, like this, as a page, as a self-contained page where there's no need to go to Google Drive or any other uh, PDF file external to the, uh, to the ePortfolio itself. So this is what I mean here. So you want to have all of your letters, all of your essays uh, posted to your ePortfolio in this manner. Okay, so let's go let's move on here. All right, so we'll talk about a resume. In fact, next week we'll be working on a resume, but this is where you might be able to include. Now, in this case, this was a stock resume, but we'll talk next week about how we're how we'll create an online resume using LinkedIn and how we'll bring that into our ePortfolio. So here again, I think we need to go through and uh, change the, all the extraneous information here. Um, uh, you might decide though to include your products here in this space, that's fine, but uh, we need to change some of the text and, and complete our ePortfolio so to include all the, all the work that we're doing so far in composition. Okay, so here we've got, it looks like an embedded document. All right, so again, I would suggest that you bring that text within your ePortfolio. Now, this is very attractive, but it, notice that it's a little bit difficult to, to read. Again, try to avoid any attachments, file attachments. So, um, I would double check maybe the background. I mean, I like the overall uh, theme, but notice that the white text and even the name is a little bit hard to read just because of the color scheme and the background uh, design. Um, again, just to make sure that you're not including an email. Um, don't include your real email. And in fact, I wouldn't even include any email uh, at all, so not to mislead the, the audience there. So these are my general comments. Uh, if you do have questions or technical issues, uh, let me know. Um, ask me in class. We'll spend a little bit of time today uh, going over any of your doubts that you have about your ePortfolio. But I think the main takeaway is to make sure that all of your work resides within the ePortfolio, that there are no links, there are no embeds, there are no file attachments. Also, your navigational bar is very important. So even though it may not be complete, Go ahead, <clears throat> set up a, a navigational bar <clears throat> that uh, shows the different areas of your, of your knowledge, of your skill sets, and of your values.